A few inches of snow and the UK shuts down, or so the joke goes. But it's no joke, it's actually happening, and at the centre of the storm is London's Heathrow Airport. Reuters Breaking Views has a unique fix, and here to tell us what it is, is Breaking Views Assistant Editor Robert Cole. Robert, we're all talking about trying to expand the capacity of Heathrow and the airports in the South East, but you think we should be reducing the capacity? Well, I think it's just a, uh, I think that's a slight simplification or over-exaggeration, because clearly if there's a, a capacity that should be met, we should be working very hard to increase that, that capacity. But it seems to us this is a, a Heathrow-specific um, uh, problem, and we're offering a Heathrow-specific uh, solution, which is far from ideal. Don't get us wrong, you know, but it just seems to me, l l let's wake up. Let's smell the bacon and let's try and deal with reality. The problem here is not... A, is that, um, well, it's snow, but the real underlying problem is that there isn't enough capacity at Heathrow uh, to deal with these kind of interruptions, which are inevitable. We hear, you know, people saying, well, they can do it in Canada and they can do it in Stavanger and they can do it. Yes, but those airports probably, and I don't know the numbers, but they're probably operating at 75, 65% of capacity. Heathrow isn't. Now, yes, we should criticise Heathrow for being inefficient in some, in, some, some, in some ways in terms of its operations. But the underlying problem here is that Heathrow operates at 95, 100% of capacity. So whenever something goes wrong, there's no slack. So what's the solution? Well, actually, you either, um, well, there's several things you do, but you either adjust... Uh, passengers' expectations. So you say, look, if you want us to I think operate, expectations are pretty low. Okay, well, they, uh, uh, actually, I think they're rather high because uh, expectations are that even in snow, Heathrow will be able to operate. It patently cannot. What you have to do is say to, to say to passengers, if you want for most of the time Heathrow to be operating at full capacity, you just have to get real and realise that if the snow hits, we're not going to be able to do that. But the more radical and perhaps more realistic. Uh, solution is for Heathrow to say, look, we want to offer a good service. We want passengers' expectations to be high. But that means we have to operate at, I don't know, 85, 80% of capacity. So there is the slack within the system okay. uh, to be able to cope with it. You mentioned some of the airports that we, we might compare uh, this bad weather, Stavanger, for example. But sure, I mean, Heathrow is compatible with New York, JFK or O'Hare in Chicago. These airports have, you know, ten times the amount of bad weather and snow that, that, that we've had here, yet they seem to cope. And also, people knew this snowfall was coming, so why not invest in a few snow ploughs, some de-icer, and uh, Bob's your uncle? Well, I think that, um, to be fair to Heathrow, I think they have invested in those snow, snow ploughs, so the, the, if you like, the, the runways were open. The de-icing, I understand, was, was an issue. Um, but, and you're absolutely right, the, the more accurate comparison is with those New York airports. And as I, I don't have the, the numbers on the tip of my tongue, but the point is I would guess that the reason they don't have these problems is, is because they have more slack. JFK or O'Hare or wherever will be operating at, you know, 85, 80% of capacity. So there is some slack. And the other thing, of course, is that because they're, you know, they have more snow more of the time, they're more used to it. And, and it's, it makes it more worthwhile. We knew it was coming. We knew well, for you know, days but, and weeks you know, it was coming. We, we have five days snow in London every year. And, and, and you know, if you've got to keep a whole bunch of snow ploughs in a, in a garage, it's a cost. Now, I'm not trying to excuse it, but, you know, those snow ploughs are going to get more use in, in, in Chicago, aren't Indeed. they? Indeed. Now, we all like to moan about it. Here we are doing just that here. Um, but does anyone outside the UK actually notice or care? Well, I mean, you know, London, for all its airport ills, is still one of the busiest airports in in, in the world, and it is a a hub. I, I have severe doubts about how long it'll hold on to that hub status. So, you know, Heathrow is an airport that people come into. We do speak to uh, an international business audience. You know, you've got lots and lots of people going to Davos this week. So, you know, it's come. lots of people might be coming through uh, London for mm -hmm. that. So, yeah, I know it is slightly parochial, but I think it's one of those kind of subjects which kind of everyone has an interest and everyone has a view. And uh, finally, hopefully we're having finally if, if, you, if, if, if you can... Uh, Briefly, does this actually have any real tangible economic impact? This particular this episode, kind of a I, I think not really. What will happen is that you know that there may be some loss of business, uh, but that will be uh, made up as people sort of 
uh, work a bit harder to, to make up the lost ground. I'm sure you'll do that, uh, Jamie. Robert, and, and I work hard every day. Abso- ab- absolutely certain. I think the more the more interesting thing is whether you know the sol- or the more pertinent thing to to examine is. Uh, if uh, sort of Heathrow must reduce its capacity kind of solution was one which was inevitable, whether that would have any wider knock-on effects, and clearly they could, although that would depend on whether, you know, actually people realise that they could fly from Gatwick or Stansted or or, or even Frankfurt as easily as, as, as Heathrow. So that's a, not an, an inevitable loss either. OK, Robert, thank you very much. That's all for now, and that, of course, was Robert Cole. Click back at 12 GMT for a look at how, uh, how the UK economy is looking under all this snow. Until then, uh, I'm Jamie McGeever. This is Reuters.